So, uh, alumni panel. Now is the time to uh, hear from, from our alumni that we have here uh, tonight. Just, uh, it will also be a chance for you guys to ask any, any questions about the program if, if you have. If you just want to be quiet tonight, cool enough. We have questions prepared. Uh, so, these alumni, you know, they've worked hard previously before, before you guys. Uh, we've tested our, our methods on them. Uh, so we could then like improve and, and provide an even better program experience throughout for for you guys. Uh, so so feel free definitely to ask them uh, questions kind of kind of how to make the most out of the program and they'll they'll talk a bit more about their their journeys. So who are the alumni actually? If you've networked around a little bit, you've you've already met them. So Stefan and Dominic from. <laughs> from kinetics uh, then we have Hannah uh, from rogue Psych. so uh, they were on the program last year uh, then we have Nico from from brain Tame. I think that is what two years ago two years ago and then <laughs> we have Elijah who, who uh, uh, was was here with his startup Archisites, but obviously also is, is involved this year with with early fans as as we've heard so We'll quickly get these guys set up. I'll turn off uh, the, the, the presentation. Cool, awesome. So probably one by one, might be helpful to kind of introduce yourself and what you guys did during, during the program, what your startups were, were about. Hey guys, um, my name's Elijah. Um, my startup was called Archisites and it, was a, it started off as a online community for minority ethnic techies. Um, and then we realized that that makes no money, no matter how much of a good cause we do. Um, so we changed that to a diversity and inclusion consultancy, focusing on getting um, black techies into the tech sector. Um, should I give more detail or should I leave it there? Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi, guys. So my name is Nikhil, and my startup was, was called Brain Team. Now it's called Stressless, so it's kind of nostalgic when I saw the name Brain Team. But we basically make games for stress relief. So these are games where the longer you play, the more relaxed you become. And that's using lights and sounds within the game that modulate certain brain patterns and activities. That was my idea. That sounds really interesting, actually. Oh, um, are you going to invest? <laughs> <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless. Um, yeah, me and Dom, we, did, uh, we founded Kinetics Decorations. It, was, it is a decorative product about, it's always hard to explain this thing, about this big, it would constantly keep track of and point at um, satellites in the orbit, such as the International Space Station. It could also do stars or the moon or the sun, though that's not particularly useful. Um, and our idea was to make it nice and luxurious looking and feeling. Um, yeah, Dom, if you want to talk a bit about yourself as well. Yeah, I'm Dominic, as he mentioned, and we basically just really liked space. So we tried to make something of it, but that's basically it. Sweet. <laughs> hey, I'm Hannah, and my startup is Rogue Psych. I basically graduated in psychology in 2020 when I think everyone's mental health was taking a bit of a knock with the pandemic and thought we need to do better than this. There's massive waiting lists. And basically, we provide online psychoeducation and workshops for 18 to 25 year olds to improve their mental health. And I'm a solo female founder, so it's a bit girl boss, but not in a toxic way. <laughs> right, so uh, we've got uh, until nine or slightly after nine. I don't think they're going to like kick us at, at like nine precisely, but probably let's not go like super over. So I think kind of the, let's ask the, the most important, the most potentially valuable questions first. And um, that would be kind of, what is like your number one or, or like two, three, like really key tips to, to make the most out of your time in, in AME? Um, I don't know if, if it's something that you guys did or if it's something that you guys, you wish you did, but kind of what would be your, your tip to, or two, three tips to really make the most out of these following uh, 105 days that these guys will be uh, taking this, this exciting journey. Do I have to go first? Any, anybody want to go first? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Oh, do you want to go? <laughs> Here we go. 
so I think firstly I'd say reach out to people because we found that out that whoever we reached out to for help they would usually say yes so if you just shoot them an email or a LinkedIn message with uh, this is who we are this is what we want to do do you have like 15 minutes or 30 minutes just for a quick zoom call they'd always say yes and it usually ended up being like two hours so we used to talk to people who were like business developers for satellite companies or in charge of the space consortium and it's quite insane that they took the time to actually speak to us so we found out basically just reach out to people they'll probably say yes to you and secondly i think use your calendar on your phone because i actually ended up scheduling my entire life last year and it was the only thing that kept me going through uni and the accelerator program at the same time and i think basically just if you can have someone to talk to because obviously it's quite a lot of work so it's really important to have someone you can share your ideas with and your frustrations and your points of contact are really good for that uh, ours was Francesca she's sadly not here but she was always insanely helpful and helped us all the way across our journey basically yeah that's basically it yeah <laughs> Rip. <laughs> so I was going to say the, the money you get, I didn't use it wisely, but I would suggest you use it wisely using one technique, which is spend it on freelancers to build a prototype. And the money you get this time, like 5,000 pounds, you could easily like hire, especially if you're a software product, you could easily get freelancers from like Upwork or some sites like that and get your product ready, like an MB, working version of an MVP, and apply to bigger competitions after that. I mean, Accelerate Me is huge. I'm not saying it's not big. <laughs> but I'm saying there are, there are business plan competitions purely for the money, not an Accelerator, like 12K, 50K, 60K. So this is like a great stepping stone towards that. And so I would suggest to you uh, use that money wisely and not spend it on, I won't say what I spend it on. <laughs> Um, quick kind of disclaimer, I'm actually kind of jealous of this cohort because you guys are getting like about double the amount that I got um, <laughs> the first time around. Um, but yeah, I would say the biggest thing for me was learning how to filter out noise. Um, when you're on this program, you're going to get a lot of um, advice, a lot of people giving you tips um, from different angles, from kind of, you know, an investment angle, a tech angle, a social angle. And are you guys going to do a mental madness this year? Not really. Not really. Okay, cool. Because that, that's why we have like the mentors very, very like this. Right. So, so you kind of right. don't get You don't get sources. Yeah. Them. Okay. So, but back in my day, <laughs> um, we had this thing called a um, mental madness where you kind of like do that like, speed dating with mentors, right? But all of them have got their own kind of like specialities and fields of interest. So I got a lot of noise, you know, people saying, how are you going to raise money? How are you going to do this? You should do this differently. You should do that differently. And I think it's important to, um, to um, not be kind of be led by what other people say on your cohort, but be guided by it, right? So kind of challenge what those th um, things are and kind of see if it makes sense within what you're trying to build. And if there is criticism or anything like that that is useful and valuable, do not shoot it down uh, because it can be quite useful. But yeah, be led. No, be guided, don't be led. <laughs> that way around, right? Yeah, yeah that yeah. way around, yeah. I feel like in some terms, I'm going to say the obvious here um, and just go with, engage with the cohort and engage with Accelerate Me because one thing that is so easy to lose track of is just how much ambition and willpower and brain there is in this room at the moment. You know, trust in yourself and trust in others that they will help you, they will give you good advice. Um, obviously, think about the advice that they're giving you, but do reach out to people to listen to what they're saying, especially within the Accelerate Me cohort. We did this a lot. and. Every time I had a conversation with somebody who wasn't technical, didn't know anything about space, because again, we did space decorations, um, they would come from a completely new perspective and say things that would have never even crossed our heads. Um, so yeah, do engage with people and you know, send them messages. And yeah, you'll, get, you'll, you'll hopefully get very useful answers. Hannah? Yeah, and with that, I'd say as long as as with the extra funding as well, so it's all been juiced up this year, you also have in-person stuff, which, you know, as was 2021, there was a pandemic, it was all remote for our cohort, and we still got loads of learning, but one massive advantage you guys have is 
in this room right now, you can do so much, not just networking, but over the shoulder testing, customer discovery interviews, you have that and make the most of it because when you're here, this is the main chance you have to test out your business idea. And I think that is the priority over Accelerate Me. It's not about doing fancy marketing or all of your finances. It's just checking that what you want to build, that people want it and what you can price for that and how you can do that in the best possible way to serve the purpose of your business. So I think with that, it's just make the most of the in-person events and your network that you have here. Awesome. Cool guys. Now, obviously, all of you uh, know, like Elon Musk said that, that uh, <clears throat> you know, it's always going to be a banger when, when somebody prefaces something with Elon Musk said. Oh, it's like, oh, what did Elon Musk say? Probably something about Doge or something. But Elon Musk said that, you know, entrepreneurship is like, like eating glass and staring into the abyss. It's sometimes it's not like a very pleasant experience. And there are definitely a lot of like hardships. Uh, probably like 90% of the time, but then like the 10% of, of like the big success kind of can, can make up for it. That's kind of the, the concept of entrepreneurship. So just so you kind of get these guys ready so they know what, what sort of pain to, to expect, um, what were like maybe the hardest parts of, of Accelerate Me or generally kind of the, the early stages of, of uh, starting, starting your, your thing? Um, so there was no difficult moment in accelerate me for me um <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't that bad but early on in kind of entrepreneurship so i made a decision in november um so for those who don't know i did a master's graduated in october or will graduate soon when they do the ceremony um i made a decision to not make any applications for any kind of graduate roles so i kind of went like straight in right and i think kind of like the scariest or the hardest moment is trying to kind of like monetize and provide for yourself um, so you can go full time. Um, I did something crazy. I had no offer. Um, I rejected all my offers um, and I had no kind of like model to actually make me any sort of income. And I think those were kind of like the hardest and the scariest and most testing times. Um, but I'm actually happy that I did it because by me having no plan B, my plan A had to work. I had no choice or so I'd be homeless. Um, and it worked. Um, so, so I'm kind of happy for that. But I'll say that was probably the most toughest um, thing. Um, because I wanted to do it full time. It was how do I make it full time? I wanted to strip any factor that could um, influence or sway that um, away from away from me. For me, it's same to be honest. Like AME, I can't think of bad things. Yeah, it was quite at easy, least for yeah. the yeah, yeah. Generally, we were in the same cohort. Yeah. Um, but in general, for me, just the one single thing is just the cliche like persistence. I failed with six business plan competitions before I got like one. And it's just the same pattern repeating over and over again. And I'm definitely not there yet. I'm still on my journey. So I can, but all, so far I can say from winning business plan competitions, launching prototypes and testing out in the market, you will, you will fail. And it's cliche as it sounds, but you 95% uh, probability you will fail in your startup as well. So if you think in terms of probabilities, that's what I like best. Like if this may, this has 80% prob probability of working then you're more likely to keep going because you know that it might fail, but I'm going to try anyway, and I have to try more again and again and try different things. So the, the concept of probability is the, one, the thing that took with me the most, I would say. I think from my side, I'll say be prepared to deal with the workload because I think most of you are students at the moment, um, unless I'm wrong, and especially if you're working on your dissertation or your master's thesis, things will get crowded, it will get busy. There were times when you know, I had uni and then dissertation and accelerate me every day um, for a long time. That's why Don was talking about the scheduling <laughs> to get you through the day. And it's not easy. And you do have to sacrifice things uh, to get there. The good part about it though, is in that the little time that you'll have for yourself, free time, if you've done everything well, for me, I was really proud of myself and every single free moment that I had because when I was not working hard, it was so much juicier and I enjoyed it so much more. It's not always easy. It's going to be hard, like dealing with everything, especially when you wake up and you know you've got a full day ahead of you of just work and nothing else. Maybe some breaks every here and then, but um, on all of, in, during all of this, you have to be careful, Hannah here can say as well, take care of your mental health and make sure that you can go 
for the long run. Because it, there is no point if you work really, really, really hard for two weeks, but then decide you're going to like fall down, you can't keep up. So find the balance that works for you, and also be prepared to take on the pretty big workload that's ahead. All right, yeah, that's true. These guys do work you quite a lot, so be prepared. Uh, I would say for me, um, as well as the, the workload, it's the matter of you know what you know, so we were quite technical, so I'm very comfortable in the technical area of things, but then our point of contact constantly pushed us to do marketing research and all of that type of stuff, so be prepared to take that. At the, everyone is comfortable in one specific area, and you probably have to look into more areas than just what you're comfortable with. And that's quite hard sometimes because it's outside of your comfort area, but that's really how you grow as well. So that's what I'd say. So when I was doing Accelerate Me, I was working full time in a role that was basically tech consultancy. So I hear about the hours, I'm like, guys, you know, it gets worse from that. But um, I would say definitely it is a workload but the thing is that you have this idea that you're incredibly passionate about you have this drive behind you to do it and the beautiful thing about it is that you know what you want to do and you have control over your work day and where you can take it so I think while it is a big commitment that you're getting into it does pay off it is like I love that word juicy it is juicy because it's not just a nine to five where you're getting your salary it's something that can change your life if it takes off and it will change what you do in the world if you can build something new and something worthwhile and that really does get you through so don't lose sight of that when you're doing it just know what you're trying to achieve with it and have the big picture in mind yeah i think you you uh touch upon a a very important concept which is kind of like drive and and motivation and uh Exactly kind of as, as I showed in, in the presentation, you know, in, in a nine to five or in uni, you kind of have to like do stuff just because like you get assigned tasks. Whereas as an entrepreneur, you, you really have to have that sort of like motivation to, 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 to do stuff. So where did you guys specifically throughout the program, throughout uh, your journeys uh, now, like where do you find, find this motivation? Uh, and also a, a detail kind of where we can then open it up for for questions. So if any of you guys have questions later, then feel free to feel free to uh, like raise your hand after this round. But yeah, where where did you kind of uh, find the motivation to to persevere uh, and to get you through kind of the the crappy non juicy times? Um, well, for la um, last year, my motivation was homelessness. Um, <laughs> this year. I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I. I am motivated. It's just, just. It's just. I'm just doing what I enjoy doing, and as a result of that, I've got this kind of like obsessive personality. So I'm gonna get shit done anyways. Um, so I don't really have to motivate myself or kick myself, you know, up the ass and say this is the hard part. Um, you know, dive deep because um, I just. I just kind of enjoy doing whatever I'm doing right now. But I also think it helps that. Um, that the community that I've built um, around me, especially the older people who have gone to launch their own startups and raise uh, and raise money, etc., they've they've allowed me to understand what the process is like. So I've been mentally prepared for that, um, anyways. But I think I, I think I've got a tough mental, so um, I don't think I need that. I just I'm just obsessive, and that's what motivates me, kind of. Uh, for me, I treat it like a game. Like you know, when you start a game, you want it to end, <laughs> and so that's really the thing. Once you start it, like you. You, you kind of, you, you fail, but you level up and you keep going, you keep going, and you want to end, get it to the end result. And yeah, the upside is huge. You could end up in a yacht with a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me and Dom, it was a bit different because our idea just came out of passion. We're, Dom said earlier, we're hugely passionate about space and the space industry. Um, and that's where before we were both looking to work as well full time. And um, it was something that we wanted to make for ourselves. It was a decoration that we wanted on our desks, um, that we wanted to get it to look nice, to work nice, just because we really believed in the idea in itself. And even if we ended up not selling it to anybody, which, you know, talk about failing, it absolutely is possible. 
we still just wanted to make it for ourselves and put it on our desk, you know, and then we would have had the only um, edition anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, for me, it was a lot of, not necessarily motivation, but you have to build like a bit of discipline for yourself as well, because there's just days where you're not really motivated, but you got to get work done, so you get it done. Um, but also just if you are actually passionate about something, then working on it is, it's nice, you know, like you look forward to making progress. And when you make progress, it feels really, really good. And you can celebrate the successes that you have. So I enjoyed working on our startup so much more than actually doing anything for uni, which is why I barely did anything for uni. <laughs> but uh, it was just a much better experience when you actually like what you're doing and you're learning something out of it for yourself, really. We folks, like, it's a digital mental health business, so there has to be some kind of sob story behind it, right, to want to go into that. And... Um, Basically, my best friend, when I was in sixth form, from about 12 years old, we were really close, she was suicidal then. And they put her on a waiting list for about 12 months, I think, and she got no support at all during that time. And when you're doing psychology, you learn a lot of stuff that you enjoy and you want to apply, but it's quite limited in what you can do. So when I graduated, I got the tech role, I upskilled in that, I did some cloud stuff. You want to be able to blend it and apply it and just think, we don't want young people to be doing that anymore when we have these online resources available. If we can fill that gap, why isn't it being filled? So I think that drives me a lot. I mean, we've had a mental health crisis that's really come to the forefront in 2020. And when you see that going on, you want to make a difference to that. And it is motivational when you see that progress and when people get back to you and say, thank you, this has helped me, that does keep you going. Cool, so we are slowly running out of time. Are there any questions, uh, anything you guys kind of? I have one question for Kinetic, you guys. Uh, would you guys like to talk about the pros and cons of working on an actual, by actual I mean like a physical product rather than a software website or an app? Um, so, turns out physical products are real expensive. Um, especially development costs, so. Especially when you want to make them good as well. Yeah. Very good. Because <laughs> we were trying to go for like a luxurious uh, aspect to it, and then we were talking to suppliers and getting uh, the prototypes and first versions done. And it was quite a large cost to development, it turns out, so obviously you have to raise the money. But besides that, actually making a prototype like that, so we were quite fortunate that we just had 3D printers in our house because I quite like 3D printing. Um, and that allowed us to make a prototype. But if you first have to like buy a 3D printer, that can be quite expensive in itself. So physical products are really nice because you can actually touch it and play around with it, which is really rewarding. But yeah, making it is expensive. But then also you get to show it to people and that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's basically my answer to that. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I guess I'll just cover the flip side. With software, it's, it's, also, it's simultaneously easier but harder. It's easier in the sense that the upfront cost is probably not as high, especially because I'm not sure. Does Accelerate Me offer that we had the Amazon Web Services? AWS, yeah, yeah. AWS uh, you might get an AWS voucher, so that helps a lot. Um, and it's also more scalable, easily to scale it software if you, get it, if you build it right. But presenting software and trying to show what software does and to highlight its value is much harder because it's more abstract. Whereas our decoration, you see it, you touch it, you see what it does. Kind of straightforward software, not so much, I suppose. What do you guys consider the biggest accomplishments so far from Startup? My biggest accomplishments? Um, sending our first deal with, um, can I say it? Uh, F it with um, UCL, University College London. Um, signed our first consultancy deal with University College London. I would say, like, I'm very early stage, so I would say um, winning 20K through business plan competitions in the university and getting the prototype ready for launch. That's the two things. He did that too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. For me, honestly, it's hard to 
pick what the biggest thing that I'm proud of is, just because I'm proud of everything that we've done. I'm proud of getting accepted into Accelerate Me. I'm proud of completing the program. I'm proud of developing the prototype, doing the, learning so much about marketing, about customer research. I, I don't think I can pick a thing that I'm most proud of. I will. Um, <laughs> I know at some point we were wondering about turning business facing, which might sound crazy because it's decoration. Um, well, we were going to try to sell it to satellite companies to basically track their satellites just for fun in the office. And we managed to get a letter of support by uh, Nano Avionics, which essentially is a satellite company for the idea. So that felt pretty cool at the time. Yeah, so I'll go with that. Last year, it was winning funding in Venture Fervor for the healthcare category, and this year we're growing the team, which is always exciting. It feels like it's taking off properly, getting more people on board and being able to pay someone to do that. It feels great. So, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how was the transition going full-time? I mean... It's fun. Um, I'm happy. I can eat. I've got a roof over my head in a, in a nice little spot in Deansgate. Um, and it also means that I can just work on whatever I want to do, you know, or work on what I wanted to work on, um, you know, full time. And I can also poke, um, poke jokes at my friends who go into corporate jobs, you know, when they complain about their hours. I say, it's not me because, um, you know, I can work when I want. So, so yeah, I've got that. I've got that as well. Yeah, I've got, I'm not full time. I've what I, the strategy I'm do, doing is uh, what I'm doing is like I gr I graduated like two three one month back, and I'm doing client work so uh, freelancing you know creating code for others that is relevant to my venture and using that money to fund my evening venture. So I'm doing it part time, and for me the way I see it is it takes a lot of experimentation and iteration before you can actually make money out of your product. And I've not made money out of my product yet. Until then, my plan is to fund it through client work and then go full time when you raise enough money. So that's my story so far. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be really quick. We haven't got there yet. Excited though, that at some point it'll happen. <laughs> Same, obviously. <laughs> So yeah, I'm part-time too. I do part-time work as a UX researcher right now with another startup and part-time on the business. I think I enjoy that for this because it's a lot of speaking to people through that and tech upskilling and getting that exposure to work I think has helped in my case because in my last business just getting that even though it is a bit corporate even though it's a bit nine to five it is great having that bright team around you and learning from people and learning these processes that are already in place because it can feel daunting when you're doing a startup and you're just a student and you're like what what the hell am I doing you know how do I get this in place and launch this so I think it can be a good balance when you get that work experience to apply that to your startup and everything you learn in that. If you're doing placement years or internships, you can have takeaways from that that you apply to your business. And come to think of it, I'm now working nine to five corporate job. I think working on your own startup, on your own product, and I think you guys might agree, is incredibly addicting, isn't it? Because Suddenly, working a nine-to-five job is so hard to tell sometimes the value of your work. However, when you work for yourself, you feel that so much more. And you feel that every second that you put in is, well, for yourself. And you see exactly what comes out of it. And, yeah, in hindsight, it's hard to tell if I'll ever adjust to a corporate nine-to-five job now. Just because I've had that experience of working towards my own thing. And I kind of want to go back there and, uh, and try again. What did you say in your interview? Where do you see yourself in five years? In your nine to five job? Yeah, right. It's it's a tricky one to answer. <laughs> I don't. I don't see myself in my nine to five job. Yeah. Existential crisis. <laughs> Existential crisis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't see myself. <laughs> I don't see myself. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, like you know, when you're playing a game and you just want it to end. I was like, I, I saw some, some dark times, dark, dark, like, I was like, like Hannah, Hannah, like you wanna, wanna, uh, yeah, yeah, get him on rogue psych. <laughs> yeah, awesome guys. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, a massive round of applause for you guys. Thank you so much.
Yeah. And uh, I guess with that, we're kind of uh, wrapping it up today.